Hello everybody, Ian Robson here, welcome back to Oklahoma. So, I made a couple additional changes to the map. So I took out the other bunker that we had in here and I put this one. I like this one a bit better here. Um, just because, it's actually, I don't know how big it is, it looks huge. Uh, we're gonna put this one in here, Just oh, we're gonna give it a go. This is actually from American Eagle Modding, this bunker. Uh, I just like it. Hopefully it's one, just one big plane, I think it is. Uh, can I check that? Yeah, it looks like it's just one big plane. Okay, good. So, it seems that way at least. And another thing I did is I went through and I adjusted some of the clip distances to reduce them, but there's still something. I think it's Joe Lindbergh's equipment that's doing it, which is normal, I guess. But it's funny, because so like I decreased the clip distance over here of all the things on this, almost everything on the silo itself. So I'm inclined to believe, because it's always over there. So I checked the sheds as well to see if that would be causing the issue. And... Um, it might be the sheds too, but I, I decreased the clip distance of that and I did a whole bunch of clip distance things of um, of the uh, farm area over there, the dairy area. So I don't know if it's related to that and I wish there was a way to like, you know, yeah, dairy area still. So I'm curious as to what, what's causing the issue. I wish I knew. Anyways, so what I did was I... Uh, I changed all those and I wish there was a default way to like set the default clip distance for everything on the map instead of having to go through things individually. There may be, but I don't know what it is offhand, so anyhow. So we're going to collect some of these bales that we bailed up uh, a while ago, an episode or two ago. Can I turn this on with this button? Maybe? Let's find out. Does it? Nope. Doesn't like that button. Okay. That's fine. So let's set our cruise control to 24, or 22, let's say. So this takes, I think it's three, I think it's three loads worth, or three piles worth. I do love this auto stacker like this. It's pretty awesome, like, when you can collect bales just like that, it's super, super slick. If I do say so myself. So I got the combine. He's currently just doing a little bit of combining. Go figure. And uh, he's harvesting a little bit of soybeans over there in one of the other fields that hasn't been hasn't um, lost its harvestability. I don't know why I want to say it that way. You can still harvest it. It hasn't withered yet. That's what I'm trying to say. So, I don't, know, I don't know, this is kind of curious now. So I think it's all Joe's equipment. So like, that dairy farm had lots of things, but I don't know. It's hard to say what's the specific cause of it. So see how it like, decreases there as I turn around that area? I don't know. This is where being a, like a mapper would come in, come in handy to be able to like, adjust some of these things very specifically. But I think it's the equipment I have. If I had to guess. So anyways, we're going to sell these bales of straw. Because we don't need this much straw. Uh, so what we're going to do is unload it. Uh, not to the left. Uh, we want to... Where is it? Unloading side. We just want to unload it onto the trailer. So let me just drive through this area. There we go. So that's all you need to do. That's the bale sale area. I never, I didn't change that. I just left it the same way. So that's why we have it, which is good. I wonder if that's, I don't know. It must be that building plus the equipment. I don't know. I probably could go into uh, the XML or the actual file itself to see if that's the problem, but I don't know. Made three grand from those bales, which is pretty good. I think our cows are okay. Let's see, pigs, we're not, we don't have any pigs, well, apparently we do. Grains, they don't have any grains, earth fruits, they don't have any earth fruits, they seem to be okay. So, luckily, this trailer takes three stacks worth, so it shouldn't take too long to get all the bales off the field, and then we can start uh, doing some field work. Uh, I think we have a couple down here. Yeah. Let's grab another load worth here. Uh, 
it's not too bad. Alright, so, there's two stacks right there. It's nice when they're right beside each other like this. Because then you can just drive right past it and you get both of them. Like that. Which is pretty awesome. And then we'll grab this last stack over here that fell over, apparently. Which is fine. These things happen. And do we have a couple down there? Okay, good. I wonder if there's a sell point for straw at the animal farm. Let's go take a quick peek and see if we can find one. But I also went through the animal farm to decrease any clip distances over there to see if that might be causing the problem. But, I don't know. Seems to be okay-ish. It's just the main farm. Like usual, basically. But, this is the other farm. There's the sheep right there. Chickens. That's the pig farm. Yeah, you can see you can see the difference though now. So when I drive close to it, uh, it takes a while for it to load, which I'm happy with actually, because that means it's not loading it from like afar, basically. Uh, I don't know if there is a cell. Yes, there is. I thought so. Could put it in there to make some TMR. There's a big TMR machine there. Uh, the other thing I did is because I changed the bunker out, I unloaded all that silage and put it into the storage facility, so. That's where it got off to, in case you're wondering. All right, let's sell this. Unload it onto the trailer and just drive through. Or not. Maybe that's not a sell point. No, that's just a, I guess that's just a storage area. <laughs> I thought it was the sell point. All right, I'll be back in a sec. All right, so I just looked over at the animal farm over there, and there actually doesn't appear to be a sell point over there. It just appears to be a uh, storage point, I guess. So it's a shame, but thought I might have uh, there might be something there, but there is not, which is fine. Let's grab some more straw from over here. What we'll do is we'll put it into the TMR mixer over there, just so in case we ever decide to use it. It should have some in it already. Uh, should be more stacks over here, oh yeah. I don't know how many bales we had, ended up doing in the end. I think we should be able to find out from statistics, actually. Uh, created bales, 256. Yeah. So we created a few bales, and that may be, might be part of the, uh, the lag issue too, it's possible. But it's not always over in this uh, side, so. I don't think I would bail every single field, that's for sure. So, if memory serves, I forget how big the actual uh, trigger point here is for the uh, TMR mix over here. This is like a giant TMR mix here. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it serves its purpose. Once you get to a certain size, it's nice, but for now, it's not. I don't think it's necessary quite yet. Now we should be able just to drive through this, theoretically, and it should be able to just to accept it, I think. Yep, there we go. And then we'll take a turn, and then we'll do the other side. I figured we'd be able to do that. But we do have, uh, do we have grass? I guess we don't have grass right now. The other side here probably doesn't need all these, but maybe it does. No, didn't think so. Ooky dook. All right, so let's take us back to the main farm, and we shall sell it in a bit. All right, just picking up the second last load here. So I got uh, these four left here. So this is like a second last trailer's load worth. And then we'll be done with this field. Which is pretty cool, actually. Didn't take too long. Uh, the nice thing about uh, this particular trailer is that it does hold quite a bit of bales. Quite a few bales, I should say. So, that's pretty nice. There you go, there's second last load. And then you got just those two stacks left, and then we'll be good to go. Alright, just picking up the last couple stacks here. I think there's only two left, if, I have to, if I'm correct. 
So the last uh, trailer's load I just put in storage, so we had some extra straw bales there. And now we're just gonna put, we're just gonna sell these two. Because I don't think we need them for anything else. We'll put some in the TMR mixer whenever we want to mess around with that. And now we have just these two stacks left and we're good to go actually. Which is good. Let's get this last little stack. Nice. There we go. That's it. Let's do a quick little check to make sure we didn't miss any on the other side of the hill, because that would be a little annoying. Driving a tractor over the hill, and all I hear is go boom right into a whole stack of <laughs> straw bales. Depending where you are in the country, uh, in Canada I'm referring to, sometimes people will just leave huge stacks of straw out in the field. Uh, here in. Ontario, that's not really possible just because our climate, but out west in uh, like Alberta, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, I think sometimes they do that. Sometimes. Not always though. But I think it's kind of neat that it's possible to do that. But it also lets you know how dry it is out there. Like if you were to leave straw out for an extended period of time, especially square bales in Ontario, they would probably rot, I would imagine. Some people do leave them outside, but they put a tarp over them and then that's, you know, they're protected. It's one of the reasons why a lot of smaller farmers do uh, round bales, because they shed the water a bit better, right? And sometimes you can get, uh, if you want, you can always use wrap. Uh, it's no well. It's kind of like, instead of using twine, you have like a wrap of sorts, like a plastic wrap, I guess. I'm not sure. I don't know how to describe it, but that's how I would describe it. Alright, so, seems to be a bit better now that I've gotten rid of uh, a ton of bales. That was my other thought, that I might have been related to the number of bales I had laying about. And I think it was partially due to that as well, so. Seems to be a bit better, which is nice, so. Alright, let's sell these last load of bales here. There we go. And just drive through. I love how you can just drive through this. That's an awesome sell point. Every sell point for hay and straw should be like that. Still a little bit choppy right here. I think it's just due to all the uh, equipment that's right there, so keep that in mind. So we netted 26,000, I guess, uh, what do we have, nine? So we had, uh, what would that be, $17,000 from that, I think? It's not bad for just hay, or straw, sorry. If it was hay, we would've got a lot more, actually, but. All right, so let's just drive through here. This is where I've kept all the hay slash straw equipment for animals so far. So as you can see, I just left the straw over here with some hay that we have. It's worth a thousand dollars, seventeen hundred dollars. And straw is just worth uh, a measly one hundred and forty-four. And silage is worth even more, of course. So, and I just left those in the there for the time being. Sweet. All right, so let's go ahead and just drop the trailer off there. Excellent. And let's prepare for our next task. All right, so I got the spreader. So I'm gonna put some lime down that field. I'll, I'll double check it first, um, but we probably will need some lime down there. So we're just gonna double check it, see what it's at, where it's at, I should say, not what it's at. I guess you could say where, where. Eh, it doesn't matter really. All right, let's take a quick little peek. Where are we at? 6.8, I imagine. 6.8. Yeah. So we'll put a little bit of lime down here. Yeah, we'll put a little bit of lime down here. Probably don't need to really, but we're going to do it just in case here. So let's go ahead. Do I have one for F3? No, I don't think so. Uh, no, actually it'd be two, not three. Okay, so we already have this, so let's set up that. This is field number two. Starting corner, southwest. Heading north, return to first point. Yes, please. And do we need to do a headland? Uh, yes, we'll do one, but after. And the only reason I say that is because I know there's a tree down that corner that will give us trouble if we don't do it. <laughs> so I'll set this guy up to do... Lime. And... Set that up. To the first waypoint. And this will be spreading fertilizer, technically. And should be good to go. 
Nice. So you can let that guy do his thing. Spreading some lime. Looks good. He should have enough for the whole field. Should be in the keyword here. Um, but I'm not certain about that, so. Yeah, the FPS seems to be a bit better now. It must have been the bales. Bales are always like that. That's the reason why you don't bail in a server very often either, actually. Uh, because of that. I took out took out chop straw as well, and I think that might be part of the problem. Because I know um, chop straw is okay-ish. But what will happen is uh, it can create, like, I found, I find at least, uh, some lag. It looks really nice, though. That's my that's my problem with it. It looks nice, but it doesn't always work the way I want it to. This field, unfortunately, is a lost cause right now. As you can see, our sunflowers did not do so well. Crop insurance? Anybody? <laughs> All right. Uh, so what we're going to do is going to grab the big John Deere and get him set up. So let's go. I think it's uh, this guy right here. Perfect. Surprise, I remember that, actually. This tractor's always so loud, too. Especially when you get it wound up, too. So there you go. So it was fine until it started realizing what I was doing. All right, so uh, let's grab the, I think we need cultivators of the Kuhn Kraus. And we also need the soil bed conditioner there. But let's grab that. Get this hooked up. I do like this cultivator. And let's get the other guy hooked up here too. So one thing to note though is if you have him hooked up and you just leave him alone for a bit, what will happen is, uh, uh, and you're not hooked up to a tractor, what will happen is you'll get it, it'll be a situation where you have like a, uh, the tongue of the Kuhn Kraus is like not in the right spot at all. Uh, that's not too bad actually. Better than I anticipated actually. Uh, is that close? I can't tell. Let's go take a quick peek back there. I think we're kind of close. No, not really. Maybe I was a bit too overzealous here. All right, let's get hooked up. You can kind of see the hookup right in the middle back there. There we go. All right, let's get this ready for field number two, I think we're on. And this is a field up here, I think. This field has been cultivated with lime and whatnot, so I think it's okay. So I just need to put some other, what do we got? 7.75 uh, and 2. Yeah, so we need to put down some N and some PK on that field before you start planting it. All right. So let's get this guy rolling over here. And we're back when we're ready to go. All right, so I rented a Rogator sprayer, 1386A sprayer. Uh, this is so we can spray our field with N and PK, because I think right now we have the lime sprayer that's currently in use at the moment. This mod came from American Eagle Modding. There's like a pack of them. There's like, uh, let me show you the minus 12,000. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, oh, why am I going to harvesters? Uh, there's a pack of them. You get uh, this, you get the spreaders, the lime spreaders, and then you also get, there's one with narrow wheels and flotations. I have the flotation tires just because it seems like the right thing to do. Um, I don't think we're gonna need this much spray at all though, now that I think about it. All right, we want N. I don't know why I went past it. Uh, PK N, just N, there we go. So we're gonna spread N on that one field over here. Uh, that we have, field number one. I don't know how wide this thing is, but it looks pretty good. It's not bad. I thought this was creating a problem before, but it actually wasn't. It was actually just user error, go figure. So how big is this? I think it's about 40 meters. Uh, probably. Pretty close to, I imagine, from the looks of it. Let's see, what is 32 meters? Uh, it's pretty close. Pretty close. All right, so let's do a headland around the outside here, and then we'll be then we'll be good to go. Oh, that's slow. Why is that going so slow? There we go. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's awfully slow. It's not a bad uh, animation, I guess, for the spray. 
Not too bad. You can lower the boom as well if you'd like. I think I have it lowered. Oh, there it is. Doesn't really make a difference in farm sim, but... Actually, maybe we will use all of this. This is actually going through quite a bit of it. So we want to have our N at... Uh, 9. So if we put N down, I believe this gives us... I think it's like 4 or 5 memory serves. I can't remember. I always seem to forget. I don't know why, but... Just the way things work sometimes. But it's a cool little mod, actually. Uh, different type of sprayer instead of using the Eagle Vista all the time, which is still one of my favorites. These ones are pretty good, though. I think these ones have a little bit less detail than the Eagle Vista, but the Eagle Vista is, is made from the in-game ones. Or the, it's not necessarily, it was from the Amazon Pantera, I believe it's made from, uh, which is from FS13. That They never, well, they brought it over, but in the end, they brought it over as like a, a gift or something. It was really strange how they did it, but that's besides the point. So we're going to do a headland here with this guy, and then we'll engage the GPS and do the middle portion of it. So I'm going to double check. How much is that? Uh, let's see if I can do this real quick. How much does it provide? Uh, let's see here. I usually have the soil mod reference sheet up, but uh, I don't for whatever reason right now. Uh, let's see. How much does N provide? Five. So this will be up to 10, which is a bit higher than we need it to be, but not by much, so that's fine. Because we want it at 9 and 6, I believe it is. If I had to guess, that was that's the appropriate levels. I think I took a note of it once. Jay Teary told me what it was supposed to be. I think it was 9 and 6. Or 9 and 5. Ooh, what's going on there? like no apparent reason for that to happen but apparently it wanted to happen the puma needs to be refilled does it i wonder if you can hire a worker with this one no a lot of the self-propelled sprays i don't think you can hire a worker with the pull behind ones seem to be okay but not the self-propelled ones so all right so we'll finish up this headland and then we'll go refill the case puma or puma <laughs> depending how you want to say it and uh Hopefully, I don't know how, I thought I'd be able to do the whole field without a problem, but I guess not. Maybe it's just, uh... See, the problem is, if I set up for course play to refill automatically, I don't think it'll refill lime. It might, actually. I, have, I can't remember. Alright, finishing the headland up here. I know I'm going over the edge of the field a little bit, but that's on purpose. I'm doing that to make sure that, uh the edges come up to uh, a nice level as well. There we go, finish the headland. Excellent. Well, almost finished. There we go. Let's hop into the Puma real quick. How far, how much more do you need to do? Oh, quite a bit actually. I'm kind of surprised. To be honest with you, like that seems like it's uh, I should have finished the whole field, but I guess not. Hmm. Alright, so I'll get this guy back on the road and move back in a sec. Alright, alright, I got the case back on the road here. And I recorded a refill course just to see if it would indeed spread, uh, go back and refill lime. I think it does. I think course play does that. I know it'll do everything else, but I'm not sure about lime specifically. So, excellent. Alright, let's go back to that row gator there. I have to tab through all my things because a rental as opposed to a uh, as opposed to one of the ones I actually own. I don't know why, but this is going to happen. Uh, let's put it in group six for now. I'm just going to do this because for some reason they want to just wait there. Peterbilt was slipping. Apparently it drove into the other one. Go we'll figure. <laughs> and what are you doing? Getting in the way, apparently. Now they're both going to do the same thing. Watch this. Ah, well. We'll let them figure it out. We'll get back to what we were doing. I think it's, uh, here we are. 
Okay, so let's get the GPS set up here. Like so. Uh, yep, that's right. No offset. Perfect. Once you get used to GPS, it's really easy to set up quickly. I don't know, I have like specific buttons set up, so I guess that's the reason why I don't have a big problem with it. But sometimes like, when you're first getting used to it, there's like so many buttons, I'm like, what do you do? What does this do? What does that do? So it can be a bit overwhelming, but... It's just the way it goes sometimes, so... Alright, so we're gonna finish up this field here. Hopefully those two trucks will figure themselves out. But I have a sneaky suspicion they probably won't. They never do. I wonder if you can turn the mirrors on here. Is there any IC in this truck? Or this... no. Alright. Let's make the turn here. Take it nice and wide so we make sure we get all the rest of the area there. There we go. Perfect. Nah, I still missed it a little bit at the end there. I'm not too worried about that. Not too bad at all. One of the cool things, of course, with drive control is you can set it up so once you reach 0%, you can just stop spraying, which is kind of nice. So if you combine that with GPS, so if you set up GPS like this, for example, and you set it up so it stops at the edge of the field, or automatically turns, whichever way you want to set it up. I always set it up to the, so it stops at the edge of the field, because I tend to do manual, I tend to like manual turning better, because you tend to, there tends to be less mistakes made. Probably could decrease the width of this by like a half meter, I think. Well, maybe not. Maybe it's fine. All right. Good. Wonder if the edges of this are uh, collidable. I'd be kind of curious to find out. All right. Let's make the turn. Start the sprayer. Don't know why. It's like I, it's like it wants me to double press the button or something. I don't know. It makes it. That's good. Thought there's gonna be have a, like a little strip right here. We will up here a little bit further. That's just my own error though. Twenty percent use so far. Not too bad. I guess you could. I'm not sure what the actual use of one of these would be like, but I've actually seen uh, not this one in real life, but the other one that spreads lime in real life, which is just, like it's huge. Like I'm I was I'm really surprised by how enormous that thing is, but. What do you expect? You know, when you have a big farm, it makes sense that you'd have to have a, a big piece of machinery to work the farm as well. Yeah, we're going to have a little tiny strip right there. That's fine. I can live with that. One second coffee break. Yeah, just a little tiny strip. Go figure. And what we'll do as well is we'll spray this field, and then we'll spray where we cut the grass as well. I'm going to put MPK down there. So like, here's an example of GPS turn. Let's see if it does it with this. So that was a manual turn. Well, that's actually not too bad. Better than I thought. Still missed a bit. And then, so right now I have it set up so it's, uh, it stops it at your field, but you can set it up so it automatically turns. You will have a bit of overlap in this context. I don't know if these booms are collidable or not, which may be a problem at the edge of that field there with all those trees, but we'll see. I don't think it will be. It's not a bad little mod. Can you put the hazards on? Oh yeah, they all work. What about a beacon? No beacon. That's okay. And of course you can raise and lower it like I was saying before. Pretty standard, I guess. Looks nice though. Rogators. You see, you see some of these in the Holland Marsh area where they do all the potatoes. In Ontario at least. Pretty cool. I wonder how far that, uh, how far is the case on that field? Uh, he's doing the headland. No. Yeah, it looks like he might be doing the headland now. All right, so this is on automatic turn. Let's see if it collides with that tree. Let's see what happens. Is it going to hit the tree? I think it will. Oh no, maybe they're not collidable. That's not too bad, actually. You can always manually turn the sprayer off and turn it on again. I'm just being lazy right now because I'm curious as to how this is going to work. So, all right, so we'll come back once the field is done. All right, so we're just finishing up the last pass here on this field, putting down N. 
and almost there we go let's fold it up turn the GPS off guess we should wait for it to fold up first it's a responsible thing to do there you go there's n on that field so we should see an increase of n on that field should go up to about 10 or so if memory serves so if I just Hop on the field here for a quick sec. Yeah, we should see it go up to uh, 10, 9 or 10, depending on where you're looking at in the field. So once we go to tomorrow, the next step will be, whoops, the next step will be putting down some PK, because that is also important. I think what, my, what we might have to do is sell a couple loads of grain so we can actually just buy a sprayer because you spray a lot in farms, uh, especially when you're playing with soil mod, so. Although this sprayer is a bit smaller, it's 32 meters, versus the 40 meter John Deere pull behind or the 40 meter Eagle Vista, but I think it fits the map nicely, so. All right, so like I said, I was gonna do, I'm going to switch over to NPK and spray that grass field, but I'll do that off camera. Ah. So that's it for me for today, folks. Whoa, apparently you can go right through that thing. That's it for me for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed the episode of Oklahoma. Uh, my name is Ian Robson. If you enjoy, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button for some more Oklahoma. I'll catch you guys later.